up guys, got another video review for you. This time we're taking a look at uh, another one of iGear's uh, mini bots and there are new mini bots. Uh, this is COGS aka Gears. So as you can see here's a big chunky truck, uh, blue and red, which is the standard colors for Gears. Uh, he does also have this gun that pegs up on the roof, which I like the look of a lot better than like Henches, because Henches was like a big shotgun that that came up like this high. It just looked totally out of you know, out of place. This guy, this one, well, the peg is very tight. I don't really want to shove it in there, but yeah. that looks a lot better. It's a smaller gun, so it looks a little cleaner on the on the when you actually start in vehicle mode. But the gun is actually a little machine gun, chain gun deal. Now let's get to take off autofocus. So you can take a look at him with the gun. Three barrels. Uh, it's actually meant to be held under slung. That's the way I do it. You can't hold it overhand too. I'll show you that in uh, robot mode. But yeah, let's take a look at him in vehicle mode real quick. He does roll very nicely. Uh, he's very solid and sturdy. And definitely, definitely very, very beefy beefy truck mode but um, the one thing you will notice uh, hopefully it comes off well on video is the colors are a little funky uh, to illustrate that here he is with his G1 counterpart you can tell uh, basically he's all blue and the red bits are just painted blue plastic uh, a lot of people complained I don't think it looks bad but like at the seams you can kinda see like some blue Seeping through in the seams a little bit, but not really. I think it, I think it looks fine for the most part, as opposed to something like uh, Bushwhacker, I mean, Beachcomber, uh, Dunraker. This is fake name. You know where the colors are very obviously just wrong, and what you'll see in the next video is just wrong. Um, this guy I think looks pretty damn good. Obviously, the blue is, is a little bit lighter. And a little bit deeper blue on the uh, the G1. Same thing with the red. But overall, I think that that looks good. Stay. So, transform this guy. What you're gonna start by doing is you want to separate the back half, and then you kind of want to just separate and pull, and that will unfold the legs. And that will also reveal the kneecaps. So the kneecaps are you can actually fold the kneecaps up first if you want. It doesn't really matter. But you just want to kind of wiggle everything. And then we have his legs. What you want now come underneath and this whole foot will pivot underhand to create the toes. You don't you can't do it overhand, it'll get stuck. So you just want to do it underhand. And then we have his legs. You can more or less see him transformed already. So next, what you want to do is come over here. He's got this. He's got similar arms to uh, Dune Raker. We just want to pull them away, but you also want to pull them on an angle because there's a tab right here that fits underneath, underneath the hood, like that. So like when you when you transform it, in, you want to collapse it in like that. So when you want to pull it out, pull it out on an angle, just to be safe. Same thing over here. Come on. Go. So you can see the the fact that it's just blue painted red, blue plastic painted red. Yeah, it's clearly evident there, where it's just blue and then all of a sudden it's red. That means it's just painted blue plastic. And I, like I said, I don't really think it's that bad, of a, that big of a deal. Unfold the arms. Now you wanna come under here, and right here the doors, on the inside of the doors are missiles. So you wanna fold these forward. Don't forget to do this because when you do the next step, you can pop these off very easily. So pull those forward. I like to pull them, push them all the way up for now, just for now. Because what we're going to do next is come around here to the back and we're going to rotate this whole backpack. It's very stiff, especially the first time. So just want to rotate it around, kind of line it up as close to center as you can. And then I fold these missile pods back down. Um, if you don't fold these in, when you rotate the backpack, it'll not push, it'll pop these out. 
and then we just kind of rotate the shoulders how we how you want. Now again, if you leave them kind of like that, he looks doofy with the shoulders. So I just kind of like angle them down a little bit, and it makes it look makes it look better. Or you can even angle them up, and it'll make it look better. But if you kind of leave it flat, it kind of looks funky. So I just kind of like lean them down a little bit. So there we have Cogs in his robot mode. We'll take a look at him with his G1 self really quick. There he is. Very, very similar. You can see like the backpack uh, is rotated on this guy. Um, just like the other uh, gear figures, um, he does have a rotating head. So as you can see, here's his show head. You can actually rotate that around, just like on Hench. And there you have his G1 head. Yeah, hard to get them next to each other so you can actually see. But you can see that's very accurate to the toy. So if you want to have a more toy accurate look, you can. I prefer the show accurate look. So I just leave it like that. It does kind of lock into place too. There's like a little catch there that'll catch it. So, I'm gonna put him to the put him off to the side. So this guy does have one other gimmick, um, that being in his back. Um, I believe it was in the uh, instructions that I didn't read, but I heard other people talking about it um, in the bio, which I never really read the bios because I know who the character is. Anyway, um, supposedly he has the ability to shoot himself up to 20 miles in the air by using his super fantastic jet thrusters that are very hard to get out. So if you just lift up on this back part, there we go. He has thrusters. So he can shoot himself up in the air. I don't know. I don't remember that ever happening in the cartoon. I don't know why they put them in there, but they did. So that's just another little gimmick that if you want, you can have him flying through the air. Eh, it's just there. That's another, uh, another little gimmick he's got. So as far as articulation, I'll show the gun off in a second too. As far as articulation, the head rotates for the gimmick and that's it, otherwise it's completely static. Um, shoulders rotate 360 degrees, just watch out for the backpack, you kind of have to turn them in to get them to rotate all the way. Um, bends at the elbow, kind of a double cut because you have a ball joint inside too. So you have this elbow and then this joint up here. Uh, rotates at the wrist, but no, take that back. Thought it did, doesn't. It just rotates on that ball joint in the, sh in the elbow. Does rotate at the waist, but again, stiff and kind of encumbered by the backpack. So you're not going to get full motion. You get that much and that much. Uh, hips are on universal joints, very stiff, so it's in and out and forward and back. Rotates to above the knee, deep end of the knee, mostly for articulation, but deep end on the knee, nothing forward because of the kneecap. Um, and foot does rotate, does pivot up and down for a transformation. No problems with posing this guy though, which is good. So the gun can either be held overhand, which looks thus, like thusly, what it looks like with the gun overhand, or you can actually underslung it, undersling it. A gun is underslung, but you can undersling it. Uh, oh my god, go in. There we go. Or you can have it underslung. Get the guard in front of the hand. Also an option. Whatever you want to do. So yeah, this guy, I think, is definitely the gem of the four that were released. I had all four, but I returned my Bushwhacker, which is not Outback, because the gun was so poorly made that it was... Basically, see how this is all molded as one piece. His gun was molded as two pieces and kind of sandwiched together. And they weren't, the tolerances were way too loose. So basically, you would 
one side would be closed and the other side would be open. So you just see like a you see the you know the seam down the middle of the gun. Like if this was the gun, it would be, you would see the seam down the middle. So like one side would be closed and the other side would be cracked open a little bit. So if you pinch this side, this side would open and it would just you know like a seesaw. So you can never get it sealed completely unless you like sanded it down and then glued it together. And the peg was thicker than his hand. So instead of being like a five millimeter peg, it was like a five point you know two millimeter peg or whatever or you know whatever size it was. It was big enough, bigger than the hand. So if you pushed it in, even if you forced it in, you would basically grind out. He had the same similar uh, silver hand, so you would just peel away the silver in the inside of his hands. Really bad design. Uh, that was a repaint of the hench mold. So he looked like, so cause the, the um, Outback was a repaint of uh, Braun. So that was, so, but uh, it's just so poorly made, that gun. And the colors were wonky, and I was just like, TF Source allowed me to return it because I had the problem with the gun. They're like, yeah, they're all like this, so if you want a refund, you can have a refund. So I did that. But... There we go. Um, out of all four, if you only bought, if you only buy one, stick with this guy. Um, Swerve is a close second, but you'll see what's wrong with him in my next video. And there's something seriously wrong with him. Depends on how much it bothers you. But this has been the video review for iGear's Mini Warrior, Mini Warrior, not Mini Bot, Mini Warrior Cogs.